Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and I'm back for some more Creature of Havoc, although I've got a bit of a dry throat so I might only record for one tonight. Hopefully now the game audio is significantly quieter and won't be so much of an issue for people. I do apologise for that, I recorded the first two episodes back to back and didn't really check. So, we encountered this possibly elven face in the purple smoke and gained the ability to think for ourselves, a sort of freedom of thought. Now this is interesting because previously we didn't have that freedom. But what intrigues me at this point is that the early portion, obviously this isn't a, a spatial map so much as a decision map, it it's all random, right? We have very little control over it. It's pretty much for dice, right? Luck of the dice. So, can we get through this wooden door? Possibly, but we didn't. So, anyway, my point was, this early portion is all leading up to this bit with the flesh feeders, the gas flask, which allows us to, to think. And I like to imagine that all the options down here, which we have or have not explored, eventually are all designed to lead to this door and this room with the dead adventurers. Now, I don't know what will happen if we're allowed to ignore the dead adventurers and um, go to the gas flask, but the point is, right, um, while this beginning section is fairly random and we don't have very much control over the creature. I'm thinking what this section does is it adds a lot of replayability to the beginning of the adventure. So if we die and come back and begin again we won't get entirely bored doing the same thing time and time again because the randomness will push us in different directions until we eventually converge on the point where we're given freedom of choice here. So it would be easy to criticise it as being completely random up to this point, but I'm trying to be optimistic and thinking, hey, you know what? Replayability, yes, it's random, but, you know, different things can happen so it doesn't get too stale. So, choice is a new and interesting concept. Except it isn't, because previously we've been allowed to attempt to make choices and then have the choices taken away from us. And we have been surprised and confused that we have not been doing what we wanted. So our creature is very confused, but we will go through the eastern door for now because we went that way before. You leave the room along a dusty corridor. A strange bluish light comes from glowstones set in the ceiling to light your way. With every step you take, a glowstone ahead of you lights up and one behind you fades to darkness. It is almost as if your progress were being monitored by some unseen entity. As you wait for your eyes to adjust to the light, you pause to consider the events in the previous room. You retract your claws and rub your rough, scaly belly thoughtfully. You can make no sense of what has happened. Eventually you set off once more and after a few paces you come to a junction. The passageway runs off to the north. Well, following the Fighting Fantasy rule, going east and a north has immediately become available, so we shall take it. The glowstones once more light your way as you plod slowly north up the passageway. After a short distance you see a shape ahead slumped motionless on the ground. When you reach the spot, you can see that these are remains of a small furry creature about the size of a dwarf you came across earlier. Now, we're not going to eat it this time because it was yucky and poisoned us. The passage heads straight for some time until you finally reach its end at a junction. You may either turn east or west here. <clears throat> Once again, we're being com given compass directions, so east it is. I wonder if these are the three witch sisters. I wouldn't be surprised. The three daughters of dream. 
As you march on eastwards, you reach a bend where the passageway turns to the north. A creaking sound from around the corner alerts you and you stop just before the bend. The sound is a slow, repeating creak. You peer around the corner to find out whether you can see anything, but the glowstones are not alike and all you can see is blackness. We will follow the sign with the arrow pointing. Um, no, I, I, that's for it. We'll, we'll continue around the corner. We're not going to go back like cowards and go the other way, because I bet we won't be given the option to come back this way again. You rush boldly around the corner to face whatever is making the creaking. Glowstones in the ceiling blink quickly on in front of you, trying to keep up with your progress. After a few steps, you reach a junction with another passageway, which runs from east to west, and on the left-hand wall, you discover the source of the creaking, a sign suspended on a short pole. A cool breeze is wafting through the passage, and this is causing the sign to creak as it swings backwards and forwards. You study the sign, which reads... F. Jisubi! We've seen Jisubi before! We should start making sense of this eventually. Underneath the letters, there is a large arrow pointing eastwards. You glare angrily at the sign for worrying you and swipe at it with your claw, but it is too high for you to reach. Well, we'll follow the sign instead of going the other way. You follow the passage eastwards, peering ahead as the glowstones flick on to light your way. Eventually, you arrive at two doors and you listen for any clues as to what may be beyond. No noise comes from beyond the door in the north wall, but there are definite sounds coming from behind the door in the east wall. A heavy breathing is unmistakable and is interrupted by loud snores. This sounds ominous. Well, our new creature is somewhat more combat capable, not by much. Let's go straight in there instead of making a loud noise which may alert our foe. Let's charge in! The door shudders under your charge but does not open. Did we charge the wrong bloody door? Lose one stamina, try again. Okay. You try again and this time the bolt is torn from the frame. The door flies open and you step into the room ready for the creature inside. The room itself has a door in each wall. Sh scattered around one corner is an untidy pile of bones. In another corner is a half-eaten human carcass. Standing over the carcass and evidently annoyed that its meal has been disturbed is a bulky creature with a hairy face, razor-sharp teeth and wild eyes. As you enter, it turns to attack and you must resolve your battle with the Manic Beast. Manic Beast Creature! Fight! It's like Manic Street Preachers, but not. Gotcha! Well, Manic Beast, we will fight on. No doubles yet, but hey, that's good. Okay, think we'll... Yeah, we lost that one. It's okay. Still no doubles. But now it doesn't matter as long as we win the next round. Hey, eh, oh, yeah, I think we do. Yeah, six diff. No, no way that was going to be lost to us. Right. I mean, we were only like two diff, but yeah. Uh, that's difference between the dice totals, not difference between the skill values. Skill was only like one or two points. We have defeated the Manic Beast. If you went, you may, if you wish, regain your strength by waiting for a few moments in the room before continuing. You can pass the time by feasting on either of the dead creatures, the manic beast or the human carcass. Um, it is possible that as a creature, we may change as a result of this. The manic beast is fresh and it may give us some kind of monstrous power. The, the human carcass might make us a little more human, which might then make us a bit better at understanding humans. So, it could also be old and gone off, though, so, uh... We'll give it a try, though. We'll risk it. 
you tuck into your meal. The meat is rather tough, as it is no doubt several days old, but while you're eating, something catches your attention. Tied around the human's waist, you find a small leather pouch which contains two gold pieces. You take these with you, we're actually paying attention to coins now, and you gain four stamina points from a meal. Your attention is also captured by two glass flasks lying by the side of the unfortunate human. Though they have been battered in the struggle, they are not broken and each contains a coloured liquid. It's green and blue. Um, the green could be poison or it could be healing. The blue, I'm not so sure. I'd be like some kind of weird magical thing. I'll drink the green liquid and see how it goes. Although the blue is more likely to be a weird thing that won't hurt us. Um, okay, fine. We'll try the blue then. The blue liquid smells sweet, and you sip down the contents of the flask. There is no noticeable effect, but the effects of the potion of fear you have just drunk will not be revealed until you enter your next battle. Maybe my enemies will fear me. When you do so, you will feel strangely afraid of your opponent, and you will never again be able to use the instant death rule unless you find someone who has the power to remove curses. Oh, we are screwed. Just when it seemed. And most importantly, we don't have a note of that curse. Um. You leave the room through a door in the east wall. The door opens into a dingy corridor, which is quite short and ends at a wooden door. When you listen at the door, you can hear conversation rising and falling in pitch as if two or three creatures or humans were locked in a long discussion. This is your only way forwards. Um, let's try and creep slowly into the room. We are somewhat afraid after all. You carefully try the door. It creaks on its hinges but opens easily, allowing you into the room. You are ready for the creatures inside and hope to surprise them, but when you enter, it is you who are surprised at what you see. The room is roughly circular, with walls in the north, south, and with doors in the north, south, and west walls. Around the walls, in between the doors, are dark arches, a total of six, which are large enough for you to enter. But from your position, it is impossible to know how deep they are. The voices which you heard earlier have stopped, as if your entrance has surprised whoever or whatever was talking. There is no sign of any living creature in the room. You step into the centre and you are startled when the door slams shut behind you. You must now decide what to do, leave through one of the doors or investigate the room further. Let's investigate the room. You glance from arch to arch, trying to decide whether to investigate them. The stillness is unnerving. Whatever happened to the voices you heard? As if in answer to your question, a sound drifts out from one of the alcoves, and we... Oh-ho! What about this? Is that better? Ah, yes. I can tell you understand me. Look, I can help you. Maybe you would like me to direct you to a tasty morsel. Two fat hobbits? 
Or shall I tell you about he who knows all your secrets? I speak, of course, of Zaradan Ma. Come, talk to me. You are stunned to silence by the voice speaking to you in your own tongue. It is inviting you towards one of the arches. Will you enter and speak with the being within, or are you suspicious of this strange voice? I would like to speak with this thing that doesn't spout gibberish at me. You are intrigued by the voice and find yourself strangely attracted to it. It guides you towards one of the central arches in the east wall. Come closer so I may speak to you in private. No, not that arch. This one. That's right. Have no fear. I will tell you of all the, of the all-knowing one and tell you where you will find some juicy hobbits. Just a little further. It is so long since I have enjoyed company and I do so love to find out what happens on the outside world. So in the outside world. You pass through the arch and look around. When your eyes have adjusted to the light, you can see that you are standing in a short tunnel which ends several paces ahead in a dead end. There are no glowstones, but a glistening sheen covers the ceiling. At the end of the short passage is a shape which you can just make out. It appears to be a human sitting on the floor and leaning against the wall, a tattered cowl over its head. A leather flagon stands at its feet. Come closer, says the voice. My hearing is not good. Can I offer you a drink? Ah, uh, is this a trap? This almost feels like a trap. The only reason that I'm not going to treat it as a trap is the language barrier. This, this could be like a gorgon with a head full of snakes underneath the blanket. That'd be so like the authors. But I'll try. Auto kill! Wow! You growl suspiciously and step closer to the figure. The spines on your back are bristling and every muscle is tense. You extend one arm just far enough to hook a claw under the ragged cowl and flick it aside, but beneath the cowl is not what you were expecting. The sight of the rotten head with its gaping eye sockets makes you stagger back in fright. An evil laughter resounds through the air, coming not from the figure, but the glistening chatter matter hanging from the ceiling. Having snared you in its lair with its ability to speak in many tongues, it now drops from its perch to cover you with its sticky web-like body. While you struggle in vain inside the living slime, it releases deadly poisons which will paralyze you. As your struggles subside, the chatter matter begins to digest your tasty body. You will get no further. The end. Wow, that was fun. What a way to go. Uh, game, you're being very weird and not letting me scroll down. There we go, right. Well, I'm going to obviously try again. Maybe get better luck or stamina. Luck or skill this time. We had good stamina. Alright, obviously adventurer difficulty because that's the way we roll. Okay, little bit on the flimsy side. We get some nice... Oh, for goodness sake, this creature is rubbish. Oh, hey, fine. Yeah, I'll take it. The ability to nudge the die accidentally is weird. Okay, so we are on a try not to take damage run. Awesome. Already read it. Um, these aren't being tracked, so we won't just kill him. We'll try talk. Take a little bit of damage. Um, we'll attempt to hide the body because we'll end up examining it instead. We got the strange piece of leather which we'll eventually be able to read. And we are continuing onwards. At this point we're full on random mode. Okay, let's turn to the north. Got the wooden door. And awesome. So yeah, about the odds, for first one, half and half, right? One to three, four to six. 
So that was a even chance. Here we have a, a one in three and a two in three. When it gets to like a, a five in six and a one in six, it barely feels like rolling. Unless the consequence of fail of not getting the rare thing, or, or you know, unless the confidence consequence is so small it doesn't matter. So with one hand you swap the door. The force is great and your fist succeeds in cracking the wood, but the door does not open and your anger rises. The sound stirs within the room. You listen carefully and can hear heavy breathing coming from within, mixed with a shuffling sound, as if something were slowly moving around. A growl, deep and low, comes from your throat. Will you risk forcing whatever is beyond the door, facing whatever is beyond the door, or will you take, try the safer route back past the dwarf? Well, we're random rolling. Okay, there was a one in six chance of something. I think we may be going back. No, we opened the... Okay. Fury builds up within you. Look at this tepitentacled monster. Are those tentacles or like big claws? You step back and with a loud roar, you charge into the door. The hinges crack and are ripped off as the door crashes inwards. Uh... This is better be a dead end, go back and and kill the other, you know, to the other, because, hmm. There is no furniture or decoration in the cave that greets your eyes. There is a seat carved out of the stone, but the room is clearly the dwelling of a captive or slave. Your eyes then switch to the room's inhabitant, and your reaction is swift. The huge claw beast whose peace you have disturbed slashes at you with its deadly talons. You lurch back and avoid the creature's onslaught, but this attack serves only to fuel your rage. Your own sharp claws slide out and you turn to the claw beast. This will be a fight. He looks like he's got a lot of stamina, but not too... Maybe I'm thinking skill 8, maybe. No! Oh, whoa! Uh, <laughs> we need the doubles. I mean... We're on three diff, right? So that's sixes and nines. That's a draw. Oh, that ain't gonna save us. Okay, damage it is. Oh, we... How? Six, four... Oh, must have been a double two. I must... How did I miss that? Weird. I was lucky. Your foe is defeated and you feel justifiably proud. You, your gaze passes from the dead creature to its lair, but there is nothing of interest and the sickening stench of the claw beast makes you want to leave quickly. There are three ways onwards, the passageway behind you, a cave entrance in the western wall, and another one in the northern wall. Well, we kind of want to roam around till we get to the purple fog again, don't we? Okay, okay. Your vengeance on the claw beast is not yet complete. You must satisfy your lust for the spoils of victory. You kneel by its side and feast on the flesh of your victim. You gain two stamina points from a delicious meal. I think we were on full health anyway. Roll a die. We are the random creature once again. We decide to head north into the wide cave entrance ahead of us. So be it. The cave leads north to a large tunnel in the rock which runs from east to west. It is large enough for you to walk along. And we decide to go west, apparently. <laughs> your choice may be made for you by rolling a die. Or you may test your luck and choose... Huh. The walls of the tunnel become damp and glisten in the odd half-light. You follow the passage until you reach a point where it turns sharply southwards. Continuing round the corner, you find that the light has now almost totally faded, and you must feel your way along the wall. Several paces down the slimy corridor, you reach a dead end. The wall is rocky and pocked with many nooks and crannies. There is also a musty smell in the air of animal decay. Perhaps simply dead rats, or maybe the remains of something larger. Around your feet, there are several loose stones. At least you assume they are stones, but some are too long, thin and brittle to be shards of rock. Your groping hand touches a length of rope which may be a 
clue out of this dead end. Will you pull it? Uh, what's our luck? Ten? Okay, we'll test luck. You, des you decide to deliberate and give the problem at hand a moment's consideration. Hooray! We can pull the luck or go back. Uh, we'll pull the rope then. It's probably it. Yep! Another auto kill. Should have gone back. Angry and frustrated, you snatch the rope and jerk it towards yourself. It offers little resistance, although a faint click you hear would have warned an astute human adventurer. It was caused by the hair trigger springing of a deadly trap which has now taken you by surprise. The trigger has released razor sharp spears from the two side walls. Even your tough, scaly skin cannot defend you against them, and your body is riddled with a dozen spears. As quickly as they appeared, the spears slide neatly out of your lifeless body and disappear back into the walls. You slump to the ground. Eventually your blood will dry and your flesh will decompose like that of the previous victims of the Dark Elves' grim death spear trap. Your adventure ends here. I'm starting to think with the amount of alternate sections for like possibly having free will or or using language. Come on, come on. Here we go. Uh, are we ever going to get out of this dungeon or is the whole book just being set in this dungeon? It would be nice to imagine. Oh, there we go. Can we get some nice rolls? We can get some nice rolls. We're going to get like skill seven next. Just watch. Okay! Creature of power and luck. Eight or nine? Nine! Wow, kind of cooled it. Now our creature is powerful and we will have to hope to make it out of here. You, little man, we want to talk to you. Why you hurt us? Um, we want to put you away. We take your message. And we'll roll. Okay. Um, stride into the chamber. Okay. We're back at these. Three rounds. Three rounds to kill. Uh, with four diffs, so good odds. <laughs> goes the creature right yeah we want luck oh sh that's bad luck oh is it fight the night it's fight the night and then we're gonna die because the bloody wizard with his spell oh what a shame hardly even feels like rolling now Oh, that ill fortune. Oi, stop twittering about it. Here we go. What a wally the dice would be in there, eh? Oh, auto kill. Awesome. And now the wizard will charm us with his spell. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh, my goodness. Game, you're being very horrid to me now. Please don't do that. And just. Oh, goodness, what's going on there? Man, that was a good one as well. That was a, a good monster. Okay, we can work with that. That's nice. Ah, uh, in many ways, we don't need the skills so much. We need the stamina and the luck more. Maybe we'll be fortunate. Right. Because I'm role-playing, I still talk to him. Try and hide the body. Search for body. Examine the stuff we can't read. Roll off. Hide for the door. Ah, uh, oh, okay. What's this? Going back. Yeah, we'll turn around. Awesome. Rawr! Stupid fat hobbit. 
We will try to roll a double. Kill you quicker. If we lose a combat round, he lives. But it's not if we draw as well. There we go. You is deaded, pal. So now we need to be lucky. Great, we're lucky. Wonderful. Kill the wizard! And then fight the knight. And go, you hurt us! We is monster! I am not a monster! I am a creature of havoc! You are hurting me! Not very fair. Don't like you. Ow! I'm gonna hit you! Nasty metal person! I'm gonna roll double eventually, or you're gonna die. Chances are... I was gonna win! Not this round, though. Oof. So... Hmm. At this point, we probably want to become rather combat-averse. Oh! Aha! Or get lots of healing. Oh! There we go. Our foe is defeated. So now... We're still randomly rolling. Oh, damn it, we got the low probability. You listen at the door and hear slivering noises following by cho followed by chomping sounds. You don't lost your mouth! Oh, my goodness. Daylight! You step back for a moment to consider what you have heard. You decide to turn back in the direction that you have just come from. As you feel your way slowly along the pitch black passage, you are again startled by the high pitched twittering noise that you remember from your last encounter with the small flying creatures. You swat hopelessly at them and manage to hit a couple, but one swoops down and catches you painfully in the left eye. Fortunately, your eye was blinking at the time and it is has not been permanently damaged, but the bruise swelling up above your left cheek will keep the eye closed for some time. You lose one skill point. You may restore this skill point if, at some time in the future, you reach daylight. The attacks from the flying creatures continue and you decide to abandon this route and make your way back to the door. Finding it once more closed and barring your way, your jaw tightens and your lips curl back in an angry snarl. Both directions face you with danger and frustration. You step back to take a leap at the door with your clawed fists. The door cracks under that, so we're back in the room here with the... So which one's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to investigate the bodies. Good. I wonder what happened if we don't. Maybe we get attacked by the creatures? Yeah, let, let's fight the flesh feeders and hope we don't die. Uh, so we're only one up here, so we're going to end up taking quite a bit of damage. We seem to have recovered a fair bit of health, though. We just want to try and roll doubles. Come on, it's a one in six chance. It's got to happen eventually, please. <laughs> of course, it'll probably happen like now when he's like got two stamina left anyway. No, okay. Oh, ow. Fine, we take damage. And again. Oh! I'm having some bad luck here tonight, I tell you that. Oof! Okay. Got two more of these buggers to fight. Ha ha! No! Not a double. Looked like it for a moment, but no. Okay, ow. Okay, we're gonna. Bloody hell. I think we're gonna die. I mean, the odds are not in our favour, you know what I'm saying? Oi, that was... fine. Okay, we can, we can work with this. I mean, we got a third one to fight. Uh, we really want to hold on to all that luck, though. 
if we can. There we go. Oh, could I please get a double here? That'd be really nice. Oh, we one up. It's a double. I don't care. Double four. So we get the purple, purple vapor. Awesome. We have choices. I could go through the door to the west to see what it does. Oh, I should have used some luck there after all. Okay. Man, we are so badly hurt. Um, we want to try and avoid... I'm going to do something different. This may be really dumb. So we go from the door to the east. Uh, past the right. We'll go northwards. Uh, if you're hungry, you may wish to... Don't eat that. We're... Bad idea. And we'll go east, continue around the corner. So now we've reached the sign, we will blatantly go the other way. Once more, the glowstones light your way as you tramp along the passage. The walls begin to glisten, and from ahead you can hear the splashings of an underground river. As you approach, a strong smell begins to waft towards you. The disgusting smell which comes from the river itself causes you to stop for a moment to catch your breath. After a few more paces, you reach a rocky bridge. Steep chasm walls stretch down to the bubbling river below, and you look over the edge to get some idea of the distance. The bridge is narrow and wet from moisture in the air. No doubt it is slippery too. You know what? I'm going to go back and take the other direction. This seems way too risky. We don't have the skill to handle this, or the kind of stamina to take a fall off that bridge. Uh, I want to try the door that doesn't have a monster behind it, and it's locked. I'll try breaking it. The door cracks as you charge it, and eventually you break into the room, but not before you take one stamina point of damage from the sore muscles in your huge scaly shoulder. This has not killed us, so that's great. Assuming you have enough stamina, you find that the room inside has no occupants. Instead, a strange desk is surrounded on three sides by racks of parchments, each rolled up neatly and tied with string. A door in the east is half hidden behind the untidy racks. Uh, pick up one of the pieces of parchment, not that we can understand it. I shouldn't have done that, should I? The rolls of parchment are meaningless to you. You step up to the desk and grab one which is open. But as you touch it, a loud noise startles you. You wheel around and your eyes widen as you see a hideous beast taking shape in the corner, materializing out of thin air. It is taller and bulkier than you, and its rough skin looks to be made not out of living flesh, but out of the rock itself, and we want to run away. Its huge fists are covered in irregular bumps, and its eyes glare at you in fury from its wide-mouthed face. The rock demon you are facing takes a step towards you and you must quickly decide what to do. The creature looks much more powerful than you are. Yeah, look, we ain't fighting. We'll probably take a bit of damage. Door in the east wall, door in the south wall through which we entered. We'll go east! Not going back to fight the manic creature. The door opens into a straight passage leading east, which you follow until you reach a dead end. Probably at high speed, while pursued by the... Oh, uh, this sounds really, really bad. <laughs> you growl in frustration and, as if your voice had acted as some kind of trigger, you hear a click and a sliding sound. Part of the rock face slides aside and reveals another passage running north and south. You step through the secret doorway, cautiously wary of a trap. When you are through, the door grinds shut again. But at the same time, there is another sound which seems to be coming from above you. Just in time, you look up to see a heavy portcullis dropping from a roof towards you. You fling yourself forward, not an instant too soon. A heavy clang sounds behind you as the portcullis hits the ground. You escape death by inches. Since you hurled yourself north, the way to the south is now sealed off by the portcullis, and you pick yourself off up and set off north. So this is a good way of preventing us backtracking to places we may have already explored, right? Uh, so this essentially desk room, go east, 
is like um wow this is all weird yeah so that's essentially preventing us from going down this way to like the manic beast or the arches right okay soon you reach a crossroads where you may turn east or west or northwards we're going to follow the fighters in fantasy rule and go north You follow the passage to the north until you reach a junction. To the left, you can see that the passageway soon reaches a dead end. But on a ledge in the end wall is a large orb of clear stone. To the right, you can see that the passage disappears around the bend heading northwards. We are given physical directions instead of compass directions. Assuming you have not already done so, if you want to examine the orb, let's go take a look at it. We might be able to... Okay, that's not good. You approach the orb. Its perch is only slightly above your head and you reach up to take it. Your claws scrape against the glass as your hand closes around it, but suddenly you leap away and howl in pain. Although its appearance gives no warning, the orb feels red hot to the touch. You lose one stamina point for the burns and you're probably going back... Uh, no! A shape begins to form in the crystal. Moments later, a shriveled, death-like human face within the orb opens its eyes and glares at you. Its mouth begins to speak and an eerie voice booms out along the corridor. We don't understand a word of that. Um, we could wait and see what the face does next. <clears throat> Leave it and go the other way. Return to the crossroad. Other branch of this passage. Yeah, look. This is bad. The fact we're not responding means he knows we're, we're not supposed to be communicating with him. We need to get out of here fast. This is like... Uh, hold on a minute. Oh. It's Pippin who goes to Gondor and Merry who stays in Rohirrim, isn't it? So yeah, this would be like when Peregrine took use of a palantiri and contacts not Sauron. I don't think it's one of the Nazgul, but it's some creature in one of the towers who asks questions of him and he answers and gets into a lot of trouble. We don't want to get into a lot of trouble. So we are absolutely leaving. This is not Vapors. This is like evil necromancer type bloke we want to get away from. The passage turns to the left, so we're going back down south, and you follow it for some time until you feel that perhaps this corridor has no end. Eventually, you see a particularly dark area straight ahead. Will you investigate, or would you rather turn round and go back? I mean, we're looking for light. Let's go back. Let's go back towards the crossroads. May I stop to examine the orb? No. Um... Passage to the west. Continue on the passage. Um, continue on to the crossroads and take passage to the west. But we. Well, no, um, no, we'll go east then. Alright. The passage continues east and you pass under two carved archways before you finally find yourself in a small circular room with no apparent way onwards. If we had more health, I would have considered venturing into the darkness. While you are considering what to do, you feel a slight shift in the ground beneath your feet. Almost as if you had pressed some invisible switch, your surroundings have now changed. Frantically, you look around to find the tunnel by which you entered, but it has disappeared. There is now no way out of the room. A rumbling noise from beneath the floor is followed by a fierce roaring, but it is not the sound of a creature. Smoke seeps from the walls and you begin to sweat as the temperature increases. The room is becoming an oven in which you are beginning to roast. As the temperature becomes unbearable, you search around for any means of escape. Are you wearing a pair of yellow metal bracelets? No, we are not. We may very well be dead then. You stagger around the walls of the room, desperately searching for a way out of the glowing furnace. But it is hopeless. The air is not so hot that you cannot breathe without scorching your lungs. 
Consciousness fades before you fi are finally roasted in the tremendous heat of the furnace trap. This is starting to feel like a reverse fighting fantasy rulebook. I'm, I'm serious. It really... There we go. Finally. I don't know why. I don't know if there's like a built-in delay before it'll allow me to scroll. But wow. We're finding all the auto kills. Fun! Okay, 90... Can we... Fine. Oh my goodness. Please. Don't be such a rubbish creature. Creature, you're gonna be rubbish. I mean, look at that now. Yep. Finally. Lucky creature? I don't know. Oh, goodness knows what I'm going to call this episode. Creature of death, probably. Oh, dear. We stomp you now. The little scre creature screams in horror as you raise your foot over its head. It squeals as it swings the sharp sword in its hand towards your leg, but the blow is weak and glances off your tough scales. You feel nothing. A second later, you are looking down with mixed feelings at the lifeless form of the dwarf. Let's uh, try and hide the body, which means we're going to search the body. And then we're back on random mode again. Okay. We don't go to the bad door. We fight. You get crushed. Auto kill. And then we will try our luck. Please be lucky. We are lucky. Kill the wizard. Fight the knight. After which, I'll probably have to end the episode, really, because it's been quite a lengthy one. Double! You is dead, mister! There's those doubles we needed earlier. Right. We, we want to eat stuff. We want to be healthy again. Good. Um, what we got? Please let us go back now. Uh, forwards. Yeah, we open the door. We don't go back and get gouged near the eye. Um, yes, we want to investigate the bodies. Lovely. Monster monsters. Come fight monsters. All right, flesh feeders. What do you got? Not a double, but I'll take it. Okay, we're getting hurt that time. I mean, two diff, we're not that much better. We win, because of two diff. Two diff, no dubs. We will fight you all. Yes, auto kill. Oh, that's not the auto kill anymore. Ooh. What's happening to these dice? Oi, 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 oi. Right, you, that's not fair. That's not fair. You're cheating me out of wins here. It's not very nice of you. Two diff, so we win. Just. Yeah, okay. We got him. Third one. Oi! Fine. I mean, it is what it is. Oi, just stop doing that, okay? Just accept the bloody first result instead of forcing the rerolls. That's like rolling one day and then rolling the second one to hit it to try and change the result. It feels very bad. In, you know, like bad sportsmanship. So, uh, we, get, we get our purple thing and now we can make decisions. I'm going to stick with this leftward um, expiration because... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go north. Um, not gonna eat the monkey body. Go east. Round the corner. And this time we're gonna follow the sign. Because I would like to try and find out what that green potion does. Oi! We're gonna fight you, you manic creature. I mean, we're on one diff, so... Basically, it's an even match, really. 
We need those doubles and we- Yep! Double kill! So I would like to eat the human carcass again and drink the green potion. Also got four stamina points back. Starting to look a bit more respectable. I'm so glad I did. You put the bottle to your mouth and gulp down the liquid. Almost immediately you begin to feel strength flowing through your huge body. You have discovered and drunk a potion of strength and it takes effect quickly. Your stamina is restored to its initial level. If only we could have saved that to later, but we're more of a creature of instinct. So, creep slowly into the room. Or rush in a surprise. Creep in slowly. And uh, investigate the room. Enter the arch. Do not approach. Try another arch. You're suspicious of this mysterious figure. You back out of the arch and poke your head into the ne one next to it. This one is also dark, but from somewhere in the darkness you can see a faint glittering as if tiny raindrops are sparkling as they fell. You cautiously step in to investigate. You reach a pile of rubble lying on the ground. Stones are scattered about it, as if from a wall which has recently collapsed. You could easily cross the rubble and make for the twinkling lights. While you are considering whether to do so or not, a crash is followed by a shower of dust as a rock falls from the ceiling. Can we go back? Climb through regardless to investigate. No, 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 no. Leave the alcove and try another. Oh, we're back at 405. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Okay. You turn around and pass through the arch. This would be the third arch. There are four others in the chamber. I thought it was three arches, three doors. You choose another and peer into its gloomy depths. You can see nothing. You pluck up courage, step inside and feel around. It appears to be empty. Your hand touches a rock wall at the back of the alcove. There is no point in investigating it further. The other alcoves are similar and you decide to leave the chamber. You may leave by one of the three doors. Uh, so north was straight ahead, west is to the left, south... We did, I thought we came in through the south. If we came in through the east, then... We've been given compass directions, so north it is. The door opens into a narrow passageway, heading north, and glowstones flick on to light your way. Unlike the other passageways you have been travelling along, this one has a cobbled floor. The cobblestones feel smooth and pleasant for you. I, and I just thought I'll come back to that in a bit. The cobblestones feel smooth and pleasant for your great feet to walk on, but you cannot ignore a feeling of apprehension since the stones must have been laid by an organized and intelligent creature. We're just north of that portcullis again, aren't we? You follow the clap passage for a short while until suddenly a loud clang sounds behind you and stops you dead in your tracks. You wheel around to find that a heavy portcullis has dropped behind you and sealed off the passage. You step back to test it, but the bars are much too strong for you to smash or even bend. You have no choice but to continue round the corridor. Round and you have no choice. You turn round and continue north up the corridor. A little further ahead, you reach a crossroads. The glowstones light up three ways onwards, but you cannot see very far down the passages. We're back here, aren't we? We're not back here. That's not because um, desk room northwest. Near. We should be back here, right? Because of a portcullis, or it, we may be somewhere else. This is odd. It doesn't immediately line up just yet. Uh, northwards, because we've got compass directions. You follow the passage to the north until you reach a junction. To the left, you can see that the passage soon reaches a dead end, but on a ledge in the end wall is a large orb of clear stone. To the right, you can see that the passage disappears 
around a bend heading northwards. So, to the left, dead end. To the right, it hooks around to the left and goes straight ahead. Um... I kind of want to go into that dark area. But here's, here's another thought, right? We we gained the ability to make decisions. We Hopefully at some point we'll gain the ability of language. But the point is then, is every path that doesn't lead to language an auto-kill? And... Are we, are we very much on a sort of one true path route now, or, or, or like a, a limited path where everything will funnel back into the same point? Because if we can... Right, my thinking is, in this initial dungeon, if we miss any core thing that we're supposed to get before leaving it, that renders us incapable of doing a particular thing, then we're going to be just useless. You know what? I'm going to end the episode here because I've actually been recording for significantly longer than I initially intended. So, I hope you've all enjoyed this one. If you have any suggestions for getting out of this horrendous subterranean lair, um, you know, not obvious stuff, but like, um, you know, like... Hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't want exact directions, just maybe a few hints. But I'll probably record the next one soon after anyway. So, I'm going to say bye for now and see you all next time. Cheerio, everyone. And good adventuring.